For many years, I've been telling my co-workers that I will fall. It's not a question whether it will happen or not, but when. When I say fall, I mean the literal sense I say down to the ground. I also tell them that I'm used to it, that I know how to fall, and if I need something, I will ask them for help. Simple as that. In the beginning, it was hard for them. They run over to help. They get worried. Now they gotten used to it. Sometimes it's difficult for others to ask you if they can help you with something without getting ahead of what that may be. And some of them distance themselves from the situation because they don't need know how to handle it. Do either of these situations sound familiar to you? They are entirely human. Sometimes all we need to communicate with one or another is a little training. Today, besides sharing my story with you, I want to talk to you about some tools that help me handle this situation, about inclusion, and about the power to adapt to diversity. Follow me on the trip of my life. I'm going to give you the short version. One morning at age of 20, I woke up and I couldn't feel my legs. Have you ever heard try to run without feeling your legs? I did. Not fun. Don't try it at home. That was the beginning of a big set of series of medical treatment and some of them were very painful and difficult. So many things go through your head at that time like that. First, there's a fear and uncertainty until you find out what is the illness you have. And then you come to terms with it and on the situation. In my case, the first step of that path was the day the neurologist gave me the diagnostic. I asked my parents to wait outside the doctor's office and had that talk with him alone. You have multiple sclerosis, he said. Here's a thought I'd like to share that will bring this home and work for me. Taking control of your life is crucial, even at your worst moment. I think that those first few minutes in which I faced the diagnosis of my illness were very important for me later asking my parents for others around me for help. Just as a starting point, the needed tools to go through hard times are inside yourself. Other people can help you learn how to walk the path of fear, make it yours, assume your situation and move on. But in the end, you are the one that needs to walk all the road. Later comes the chance to talk about what is happening to you. And that can be a big help. In fact, one pivotal moment was when a girl I knew from college introduced me to her dad. Like me, he had multiple sclerosis, and he set me straight about the illness. It's not a bed of roses, he said, but you can live with it. I never forget those words. I began planning adventures, world travel, scuba diving, skying, but I also embarked on my road to other stations, adapting to the idea that I will be able to practice the sport anymore, adapting to my complaints, to my body, to the limits I start in setting and the demands. In fact, when I start in treatment, I have to self-inject a medicine three times a week and traveling with a cooler fillet with needles for whatever I want. I believe that all of us have to adapt at different points in life, in day-to-day -day situations and extraordinary ones as well. It's like that little stool that we use to reach the highest self if we are not tall enough to reach it on our own. My personal strategy is evolving naturally and what I saw, that also worked for the people close to me. Sometimes those around us aren't so what to do. Extremes are aren't helpful. Lying it on two things can be as bad as apathy. So what's the key of making our relationship simple? Talking. Doing things without considering the people you are doing them for is like trying to put yourself in the shoes of someone you may or you may not entirely understand. Getting involved is what allows you to see the world through their eyes. So how do we do that? First, don't treat me special. I'm just a regular guy with an illness. Treat me like you will anyone else. Second, ask what you can help me with, and I'll tell you. Third, whatever you can do that make my life easier and help me work in my fullest is welcome. Just remember this. It's all about seeing through the eyes of the person who needs the help. It's like any other problem. If someone has allergies, you don't need to put yourself in their shoes. You just need to see things from their perspective. That person will ask you to close the window in the springtime. Simple as that. Why do I mention this? Because it's related to inclusion initiatives that have been making an impact at companies for several years now. The secret isn't about having areas of services dedicated to people with disabilities. It's about all of us sharing the same areas and being able to enjoy them. Whatever our circumstances are, 
even if it's someone like me who trips or falls on the floor one or twice per week. That is why inclusion is a practice that we build on a daily basis. We are what engineers refer as a corner cases. Most systems are designed to 90% of the people and that's normal. So let's do what needs to be done to incorporate the corner cases too. The technology department had done much for the integration of people with disabilities and now the time to change gears and think about inclusion. Design and system that consider the corner cases right from the get-go. For example, I always had issues with the time some doors remain open when I use my Actas car. I always need three or more seconds that the average person, so the door blocks before I can open them, and I need to create a strategy to just open the office door. I'm a corner case. The time is enough for the 99% of the people, but not for me, because it all comes down on how we relate to others, understanding and respecting difference. And let me say that I worked on several different companies, I never had any trouble, and of course, glove and onboarding process was just perfect. On one hand, I was asked about my professional abilities as a Java developer. On the other, completely separate, I explained the conditions I need for optimal performance. For example, I asked for a parking spot in the garage because it's important for me to present as my energy for essential tasks as the opposite to a non-essential, like riding the subway. I'm sharing my story today, so you can see things through my eyes for a little while. But clearly, we all have needs that require digit mind because it's not people who are limited, limitation common in interaction with others around you. I'm referring to structural issues, but also to attitude that can pose an obstacle. If we eliminate that obstacle, we no longer have disability, we have diversity. Doesn't that sound better? To sum things up, I hope I motivated you to overcome adversity, ask for help, and really take a good look of those around you. I hope to have contributed to extending that bridge my friend built when she introduced me to her father. I think this is a good note to end on, talking about how bridge our different. Thank you.